Okay. that needs a bylaw review, contract review, um, you know, looking at special projects. We have students supervised by uh, tenured faculty that provide those services to uh, the community. So why are we here tonight? Uh, the college is about to embark on a major upgrade of its campus. We have um, recently let me just jump ahead to the map. This is already slide number 11. The Hastings campus, situated in the nexus of the Civic Center, Mid Market, and Tenderloin neighborhoods. We have three buildings. This is a more granular view on page 13. So we recently concluded an assessment of our, of our physical plan. We have the 198 McAllister building, built in 1953. It's where 83% of our classroom spaces are. And this building is in pretty bad shape in terms of the uh, heating, the ventilation, the air conditioning. The, the core building systems are in the final stages of their, uh, their lifespans. Uh, the other major conclusion we reached is our student housing facility. 100 McAllister, built in 1929, 28-story uh, high-rise uh, structure, uh, primarily functions as student housing. We're very fortunate to have 250 units of housing that houses 280 of our students. So the academic building is in need of upgrade or replacement because if we don't do that, the systems will fail and we will eventually have to you know, move out of the structure because we can't run our classes there and that would be uh, business fatal to our organization. The second issue is 100 McAllister, which is a beautiful old building, it's a classic structure. Uh, we have been able to do a lot of work on the fire life safety systems, complete top to bottom upgrade in 2004, but only very limited seismic strengthening which is problematic given that you know, a major earthquake is not a question of if, but when. So what's driving our plan is to create the campus to support the academic program, i.e. replace 198 McAllister, as well as provide code compliant and increased levels of student housing. So to help us along, the state of California, Governor Jerry Brown uh, appropriated 30, uh, $36.8 million in the Budget Act 2015 to uh, allow us to rehab the building. Sir. Sir. 
Do we get ready set? So we have a, a state appropriation to fund a new academic building at 333 Golden Gate. It currently serves as a site of the demonstration gardens. It's that, it's, it's that lot between the parking garage and the back of 200 McAllister. So the plan is with the state funding to build a new academic building, replace the outdoor functionality that is currently in the space in the garden up onto the rooftops of both the academic building and the adjoining 200 McAllister building. So that's sort of the first domino. That planning is underway. We are in the programming phase. We are slated to break ground in 2017, opening in 2019. The second element, which I think in many ways is more exciting, is upon the completion of, of that building, we will tear down the old academic building, and in partnership with the University of California, San Francisco, the medical school, develop new student housing there. And we hope to be able to program in about 800 units of housing. So there will be 800 units exclusively for UC Hastings, UCSF, students, faculty, hopefully staff. Because um, you know, student housing is a big deal, as you all know. I mean, students who are in debt up to their necks that have to compete in the same market that we all do. And they're competing with you know, people who work at Twitter and Zendesk. And you know, it's all great, but you know, a student is not in the same position to, you know, to write the check. It's, it's, all, it's just debt. So we figured that by doing this and then charging you know, the rents that a student can afford, which still seems high to me, actually, uh, it saves forty to $50,000 up the cost of their education. And that education isn't cheap to begin with. Don't get me Our tuition is $43,000 a year. It's tuition only. You layer in housing costs. Uh, the average Hastings students graduates with $140,000 in debt, law school only. So that really affects the career choices they can make. They, they, they may not be able to go into public service or public interest because they're paying their student loans. Uh, I, I would imagine there are judges who are still paying their student loans, which is not a necessarily good thing. So we would then build this housing structure uh, going to about 140 feet off of the Callister Street, 800 units, active ground floor uses, which is, again, critically important. If, if you walk around 188 McAllister today, the back side of the building is totally barren. Yeah, here we go. So these, on page uh, 15, these are the structures that would be torn down, the front and the back side of, of 188 McAllister. So the, the academic functions would be placed on Golden Gate Avenue. We would have active uses on the ground floor of 198, uh, academic space, community serving retail. And then the third domino is they would empty out the tower and, and do a re re rehabilitation, modernization of that building. Now this works because of the partnership with UCSF. And we will be sharing our campus, sharing our food service, sharing um, the amenities, sharing our athletic space, co-mingling doctors, future doctors and future lawyers in what be will become a graduate student village. And it's going to help small businesses in the neighborhood. We'll be bringing in you know, younger people who you know, are not going to be gentrifying elements. They're not going to be going to a boulevard restaurant or you know, the fancy places. They're going to be supporting small businesses in the neighborhood. They're going to be going to the sandwich shops, the Vietnamese places on Larkin Street, the bars, the nightclubs. They're going to be active participants in the neighborhood. And I think it's a real positive opportunity and it's one that we're moving on quickly. So we hope to be breaking ground on the new student housing in 2020, complete that by 2022, 2023, do the rehabilitation of, of 100 McAllister. So it's, again, you got a full agenda tonight, but if there's any questions, I'd be you know, honored, thrilled to uh, address them. Um, let's see if we yes. Do you see in the future 
uh, uh, maybe the state re uh, paying part of the uh, tuition uh, uh, student debt uh, for people that have, have useful, uh, useful uh, jobs, uh, you know, in the community. I mean, like I say, if somebody has a law degree and wishes to do law, you know, full-time uh, law service uh, for uh, different... It's called a loan forgiveness program. Yeah. And the, the state of California has a program, but they, don't, they have never funded it. Uh, there, there is a federal program. Uh -huh. <coughs> and the, the college has institutional funds as well. We call it our public interest career assistance program. Uh -huh. So we have institutional funds that we use to help students you know, manage their, their debt you know, post-graduation. Uh, the federal program is pretty robust, but again, I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, there have been discussions about reducing the, uh, the federal subsidy. But you know, students, there really are limited in what they can do in terms of career choices when you're looking you know, straight in the face of that, that monthly payment right at graduation. It's kind of serfdom. Well, it's, it is. It's uh, involuntary servitude. Yeah. Um, you know, you get an education. You know, and education is a public good. I mean, I think we should mm -hmm. never lose sight of that. Uh, it's, it's a public good, a public obligation. If you're fortunate enough to have the financial means to go to private school, that's great. But it's still one of the core uh, functions of, of government. And it's unfortunate that mm -hmm. it's being monetized in the effort to uh, you know, fund other taxes or whatever, but it's, it is a problem. And I, I would ask Mark Rennie in the audience how much he paid in 19, whatever it was. I paid $50 a semester. I left law school without zero dollars in debt. $50. I worked a little bit in law school with zero debt. Mm -hmm. 50 bucks. Yeah, we, we now are at $22,100 per semester. And you could get a Pacific Heights, a beautiful house in Pacific Heights for $400. Beautiful and that's what we did. I mean, it was, it's like, I sit there and you've told me the story before and I'm thinking, how the hell? But you have a whole generation of people who graduated with no debt yeah. that could go to the Tenderloin Housing Program, could go into the arts and could go into various places that, so now this a generation or two, who now is almost second generation later, you know what I say, it's all gone. It's really a tragedy. You know, the nickel and diming of America is, uh, is, is, is miserable. And so you look at our tuition, and then you look at some kid who was waiting for the last minute to hear from Harvard, didn't get the call, says, well, I'll go to, I'll go to UC Hastings, it's a great school, it's sort of last minute. They hit the scene, they're looking at Craigslist, their, their jaws drop, and you know, our students, Institutions providing student housing help stabilize the rental market. Because mm -hmm. if you're a, a landlord and you're, you've got a rent controlled unit that you operate, and a student comes walking down the road, yeah, you'll, you'll rent to them absolutely because they'll leave in three or four years. You can reset the rent to, to market rate. So it's really imperative, I think, that institutions really take greater responsibility for housing their students. It takes pressure off the rental market, it helps stabilize the rental market. And it preserves the access to people of you know limited financial means. So, yes, sir. Um, getting our housing into the student um, the actual function of Hastings. Yeah. Um, are there any long-term plans for incorporating the various aspects of people like in our community, the non-English-speaking community, which we have over 200 different languages down here, um, and incorporating them into the uh, student body and getting them in, cycled into a, a group from a place like Hastings to get education for their communities. Well, that's a thank you for that question. That's a great question. We have we have historically since the mid 1960s had a program called the Legal Education Opportunity Program. And, and Hastings is a great law school; it's very competitive. But we let in 20 percent of our student body based on factors other than your LSAT score, your legal test scores and your undergraduate GPA. We're letting kids who wouldn't get in the door 
had it just moved me the numbers, we look at their life experiences, you know, they may have a, a rotten GPA because the mom and dad were in the military and they went to seven high schools in, in three years. So uh, we take that our public mission very seriously. And in doing so, we take chances on people that other schools wouldn't, wouldn't let in. So um, many of them are fam children of first generation Americans. Actually, we had a, a student He's graduated. He grew up on Leavenworth and uh, Pine. Yeah. And Leavenworth and Bush. You know, a great kid. Uh, I won't say that. We, we have, if you look at the, we have banners out, one of our banners is of, of the student. And you know, he grew up, in, in the, he was a, neighbor, a neighborhood kid. He you know, grew up in an SRO. You know, had you know, parents who were uh, committed to uh, seeing he got educated. And um, you know, he graduated, he did very, very well at these things, uh, top third of his class. And you know, I think that's what the American story should be about, opportunity, um, social mobility. And so when you're looking at cost right in the face, that, 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 that runs counter to the whole objective of, of a public official or public school. Well, with that, yes, sir. So you got you know, organized the police department. Captain Ewing, I think, is doing a good job, but she's got more resources, which is a plus. Again, the police redistricting, I think, has helped a lot. But it's, it's incumbent upon us as a community to, if we're feeling that we're being shafted. It's taking our services away from here, though. It's giving us that us fewer services. Well, the police department just got more more recruits in the state. He's not with the police department. I, I don't. I don't say it was. I'd say it was. No, I understand. Let me ask the question. Yeah. Okay, but then then that's my that's my point. You can ask a question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> down here for us? They're not. So, uh, what do you mean by housing?